So this little circuit here is a smart card shim that has smart card contacts on one side and connection to a microcontroller on the other that I had used for part of my uh, smart parking meter research a few years ago. So this particular uh, microcontroller is a PIC16F648A. And uh, let's go ahead and try to read the firmware out of the device and see if we can load it up into a development environment to uh, check out a binary uh, and possibly some disassembled code. First thing we need to do is pop it out of the socket. In this case, it's a, a dip dual inline package socket, so pretty easy to just pop out with the screwdriver. This socket here for the device programmer is called a zero insertion force socket, so we lift up the little lever, stick the device in, close the socket, and now it's locked in here. And this is a general purpose device programmer, a Zeltec uh, Super Pro 501S. There's lots of different models, lots of different vendors out there, but this one supports, I don't know, some tens of thousands of different types of devices, so it's a pretty cool tool. So we have the chip loaded in, connected USB to my machine, which is uh, Windows XP, and I have the standard uh, Super Pro software running on here. First thing we need to do is select the actual device that's in the programmer. So this is the PIC16F648A, and we're just the standard uh, package type there. Click OK, and uh, we're going to see a bunch of information about the part, so memory map, and uh, how to place the part into the socket. So close that. The algorithm has now been loaded to communicate properly with the microchip pick device. And uh, the buffer is clear. So right now there's nothing in the buffer. All Fs means uh, buffer is empty. So now we're just going to go ahead and try to read the device by clicking read. And less than a second later, it says uh, read OK. And we can see the checksum of the buffer actually changed. So now uh, looks like we have some contents in there. So we just go to buffer, and here we go. This is the actual binary. Um, the code that was stored in the flash memory area of the uh, microchip pick. Now, if the code protection bit was set, we would just see all Fs or all zeros here that would prevent us from reading the contents out. But in this case, everything is there for us, which is nice. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to export uh, the file and save the buffer to an Intel hex file, which is just a standard text format to store um, a, a, a raw binary uh, file. So let's name this as, uh, I don't know, first let's go to, make sure we go to our desktop. Name it as uh, pick.hex. Save that out. Now if we load that up, we just look at it with like notepad. You'll see what it looks like. And so an Intel hex file, you basically have um, some information at the beginning, a little header that tells what the current line of data is. Then there's an address and a bunch of data and then a checksum at the end. So if you loaded this right into a hex editor, most of the time hex editors nowadays for some reason don't support Intel hex files. Uh, so you'd have to convert it to, to a binary, do an Intel hex to binary conversion and load that out. But in our case, now that we have this hex file, we can now go to MPLAB IDE, which is a microchip uh, development environment for microchip products. For all of their products, uses a standard development environment. We're using MPLAB uh, 8.92. They actually now have MPLAB X, which is a cross-platform version, but I like using 8.92, especially on, uh, on Windows XP. So for here, what we can do, we need to make sure that the uh, device is selected properly in this tool as well, so we can go uh, to configure select device and choose the 16F648A. Click OK. Now this tool is expecting uh, a, a hex file or expecting to communicate through programming interface or debugging interface to that type of device. Since we just have the hex file, we can go and do an import hex file. And now we're going to load the binary that was uh, just pulled out of the smart card emulator, load it into the development environment and see the raw memory and also see a disassembly listing. So click OK. It says loaded hex file. All we have to do is go to view program memory. Here it is. So here's the program memory. Uh, we can actually see address, opcodes, and the actual disassembly listing here of the, uh, of the product. 
actually even run a simulation at this point with, with this particular tool and single step through uh, on a simulated version of the microcontroller.